So I'm just walking you through a few examples of finding the simultaneous moves Nash equilibrium in different cases. And one thing to keep in mind is that there can be zero Nash equilibrium, there can be one Nash equilibrium, there can be two Nash e equilibrium, um, there could be four Nash equilibrium, for example, if everybody has the same payoffs. So um, we don't go into the problems with any preconceived notion of that. So let's get some practice. All right, and of course, all my examples are from Jane Austen and Harry Potter. So we have Henrietta and Louisa from Persuasion. And um, Henrietta can go up and down, and she is, of course, player one. Louisa can go left or right, and she is player two. So starting from Henrietta's perspective, we're going to think about what Henrietta's best response will be to each of Louisa's strategies. So we're thinking Henrietta's perspective right now. So if Louisa chooses left, Henrietta prefers the 8 over the 6. If Louisa goes right, then Henrietta prefers the 7 over the 4. Now we switch perspectives, and we're going to think from Louisa's perspective, player 2. But we have to check Louisa's best response to each of Henrietta's strategies. So if Henrietta goes up, we're going to be liking the 7 better than the 6. If Henrietta goes down, we like the 8 better than the 5. So in this case, we have two Nash equilibriums. One is Henrietta going up, Louisa going left. The other is Henrietta going down, and Louisa going right. And in both of those perspectives, um, each player can say, given, if we end up down here, given what the other player did, I'm happy with my choice. So two Nash equilibriums there. So let's come over to Liz and Jane from Pride and Prejudice. Um, they, they, all these players have the same strategies up and down, left and right. So we'll start from Liz's perspective, meaning player one, and we want to check Liz's best response to each of Jane's strategies. So if Jane goes left, Liz likes the 10 better than the 9. If Liz goes right, Jane likes the, sorry, if Jane goes right, Liz likes the 2 better than the one. And now we switch perspectives, and we're going to be thinking from Jane's perspective, meaning we're looking at player two's payoffs, and we're going to check Jane's best response to each of Liz's strategies. So if Liz goes up, Jane's best response is going to be to choose the 10. And if Liz goes down, Jane's best response is going to be to choose the two. So here we have our Nash equilibrium, and this is actually a prisoner's dilemma. Um, both players have a dominant strategy. Jane's dominant strategy is to always go down. <laughs> Liz's strategy is to always go down. Jane's strategy is to always go right. Um, but when they get there, they both would have preferred the situation where they both chose their dominated strategy. And anytime you have that, it's a prisoner's dilemma. So let's try um, Harry and Malfoy. We have this, and we'll start in Harry's perspective, meaning we're looking at player one's payoffs. We'll check Malfoy's strategies from Harry's perspective. So if Malfoy goes left, Harry would have wished he would have gone down and gotten the seven. If Malfoy chooses right, Harry would have wished he would have chosen the four. We'll switch perspectives and think about this from Malfoy's perspective. If Harry goes up, Malfoy would have wished he would have chosen the 8. He wish, would have wished he'd gone left. If Harry goes down, Malfoy's best response to, hit, to Harry going down is to choose right. So in this game, there's no Nash equilibrium. Over here, we have Ron and Hermione playing a game, and we'll start with Ron's perspective. So if Ron goes up, uh, sorry, Ron, Ron's perspective, meaning we're going to check Hermione's strategies. So if Hermione goes left, Ron is choosing between the 7 and the 4. Ron likes the 7. If, Ron, uh, if Hermione goes right, um, Ron is choosing between the 5 and the 6, and he would like to choose the, the 6. He would like to go down as his best response to Hermione's choice of going right. So we'll flip the perspectives and think about Hermione's payoffs from each of Ron's strategies. So if Ron takes the strategy of going up, Hermione would have wished she would have gone left. If Ron goes down, Hermione's best response is to go left. So Hermione has that dominant strategy of going left, and 
Ron's going to go up, we have one Nash equilibrium. Um, and that is how you approach this kind of problem.